Attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good afternoon, everyone. We are very, very happy to welcome you all to this ninth session of EVPA's EU webinar series. Today's topic will be social impact investing for foundations, discussing complementary tools to grant making that can help maximize social impact. My name is um, Eleanor Dupre. I am the head of policy at the European Venture Philanthropy Association, speaking to you from our office in Brussels. I'm sitting here with my colleague Susanna Sobolewska, Public Affairs uh, Manager at EVPA, to whom I'll give the floor in a few seconds so she can take you through some technical aspects and, um, and also a brief introduction to EVPA before we start. I also take the opp this opportunity to thank um, our colleague Simon, who is a policy analyst in our team, who did a great job in, um, in organizing this webinar. Susanna, I'll leave you the floor. Thanks, Eleanor. Hi, everyone. Before we dive into the topic of today's webinar, we would like to remind you of a few housekeeping rules. Throughout the session, you will be able to open or hide the control panel, which is the console that appears on the right-hand side of your screen. Note that the control panel automatically collapses when it's not being used, but you can keep it visible via the view menu on the top. In the join audio section of the control panel, you should tick the option microphone and speakers if you are joining the webinar through the internet. If you are using the telephone rather than VOIP, you must, use, you must choose telephone and use the PIN code provided in the confirmation you received when you registered for this webinar. You can also see the PIN on this slide. If you encounter any technical issues, please don't hesitate to call EVPA and get in touch with our colleague Simon. The last part of today's webinar will consist of an interactive Q&A session during which the panelists will answer your questions. Given the high level of participation to today's webinar, you are more than 220 to have registered. We will be keeping the participants to the webinar muted in order to avoid noise interferences, but we really encourage you all to raise any questions you might have. So if you do have a question, don't hesitate to write it down in the questions section of the control panel anytime throughout this webinar. Please do not forget to clearly mention to whom you would like to address the question. All written questions will be directed to the panelists during the Q&A time. If for some reason your question has not been answered during the webinar, feel free to contact us via an email afterwards and we'll ensure that the, ne the necessary follow-up. You can also use that question section to let us know about any technical problem while connected to the webinar. And last but not least, note that the session is being recorded and you should be able to watch the recording and consult the presentation as of next week on EDPA's website. And for that, please visit the previous webinar section in the menu of our website. Now that these housekeeping details are in order, let me give you a quick word about the European Venture Philanthropy Association. As you may already know, EVPA is a membership organization currently gathering more than 220 members based across all of Europe, which are interested in, practicing, interested in or practicing venture philanthropy and social investment. Our members include foundations, social investors, academics, financial institutions, as well as service providers. In accordance with our strategic objective to co-create a well-functioning ecosystem for societal impact, EVPA also plays a decisive role in fostering conducive policy environments, both at the European and national levels. Our policy, policy and public affairs work therefore relies on two pillars. First, in our role as a thought leader, we act as a counterpart for the institutions of the EU by being the voice of the sector, communicating the concerns and expectations of our members to European policymakers. Doing so, we lead the discussion and shape the debate. We also spot and discuss key topics of interest to our sector, including relevant initiatives undertaken by the EU. Second, in our role as a catalyst, we bring together different actors together in conversation and collaboration in order to increase mutual understanding, shared value, and impact. 
We spearhead initiatives that tap into the synergies between the public and private sector and showcase noteworthy best policy practices and inspirational success stories from our sector. We aim to inform, initiate interactions, and inspire. This slide gives you more information about the various sessions we organized in the context of our EU webinar series, a project we started mid-2014 and through which we could reach more than 1,000 people. This series is meant to connect policymakers and practitioners in the venture philanthropy and social investment sector around issues of interest for the policy angle. As you can see, we've already addressed issues such as social impact bonds, public procurement, retail impact investing, or crowdfunding. If you are interested in these topics, all recordings and presentations are freely available on our website. At the end of the webinar, a very short survey will pop up on your screen. As your feedback is very useful to improve what we do, we would greatly appreciate it if you could take two minutes to fill this in. By the way, it's an opportunity for you to let us know about a specific policy topic you'd like us to address in our EU webinar series, so don't hesitate to grab it. Well, many thanks for this, um, Susanna. <clears throat> also, as a, as a background for today's webinar, uh, we wanted to briefly highlight this investment spectrum, which EVP often displays in its publications and research. Um, and which shows the continuum of complementary approaches that can be used to financially support any kind of project. Um, so you can see on the left-hand side, we find the grant-making approach traditionally pursued by charities, focusing on, on impact mostly, whereas the far right-hand um, of this, this scheme is looking at more traditional businesses, such as listed companies, uh, which are driven by, by profit-making mainly. Um, as Susanna just mentioned, EVPA focuses on rather the left-hand side of this table, gathering venture philanthropists and social investors. These two categories of organizations are often opposed, but a growing number of, uh, of these organizations are also combining both approaches in order to maximize impact in a sustainable way. And, and this is also the case of a, a growing number of foundations which engage into, engage into um, social impact investing as a complement to the grant they already make. Um, this is already very much the case in, in some, with some of the US foundations, but also increasingly across Europe. So this is precisely what we want to look at with today's webinar, which is meant to explore the different social investment tools that foundations have at their disposal to maximize social impact while also learning more about the specificity of, of a selection of national regulatory ecosystems. Um, in order to, um, to shed light on this interesting topic, we are very happy to welcome today some key practitioners from Germany, the UK and Italy with experience in social impact investing for foundations. So we are indeed very glad to have a panel of four experts with us, with us today. Joining, uh, joining us from Germany, we are happy to welcome Felix Oldenburg, who is the Secretary General of the Associations, Association of German Foundations, which is the biggest umbrella association of foundations in Europe, representing three quarters of the assets of German foundations. Also speaking to us from Germany, we welcome Johannes Weber, Project Manager at BMW Stiftung Herbert Quant, an expert in impact investing in Germany. We also have the pleasure of welcoming Caroline Mason, Chief Executive of Esme Furban Foundation in the UK, which has been practicing social impact investing for more than 10 years now. Last but not least, speaking to us from, from Italy, we are also very happy to welcome Raffaella Abate, Financial Officer within the Endowment Management Team responsible for the mission connecting Connected Investing Practice at Fondazione Caripro. Felix, Johannes, Caroline and Raffaella, many thanks again for having accepted to be part of this session and we look very much forward to listening to you. Before we do so, i just give you an overview about the program of today's program. So to start with, uh, my colleague Susanna will give you a little background about what mission related investment is in the, in the broader context of social impact investment for, for, for foundations. 
And then we'll turn to Germany, uh, listening first to, um, to Felix, who will give us an overview of um, social impact investment opportunities and challenges uh, for German foundations. Um, after Felix, Johannes will, have a, will, will let us know more about a mission-related investment pilot fund taking place in Germany, in which uh, six major foundations have invested in the field of education. Next, uh, Caroline Mason will let us know a little bit more about how Esme Furban Foundation is actually becoming an expert in social investment since they have been doing that for more than 10 years. And, and she will also share with us some, some lessons learned. And then the last example is, is with um, Raffaella from Fondazione Cariplo in Italy. And Raffaella will let us know more about how this uh, banking foundation, who is a very specific type, of, which is a very specific type of foundation in Italy, um, is doing mission-connected investment. Um, after these four uh, parts, we will also have the chance to um, to have a panel discussion and also an interactive Q&A session with participants. So, as Susanna mentioned, you are all very much invited to um, to ask your question throughout throughout this webinar and um, in written form and make sure you, you mention to whom you would like us to address this question at the end. So, before we leave the floor to our speakers, I'll just let Susanna provide you with some background information and, and a few concept clarification. Thanks, Eleanor. Yes, foundations are key funders of social initiatives, and traditionally their main financing instrument has been grants. Today, However, foundations are increasingly looking for additional ways to maximize their social impact. Social impact investing is one such approach, offering a spectrum of tools that can complement a foundation's grant-making activities. EDPA defines social impact investing as an encompassing investment that may generate a financial return, but where societal impact comes first. The spectrum of tools at foundation's disposal is rich, However, only few foundations have integrated these tools into their operations. Traditionally, foundations have donated the returns on investment of their endowment to social beneficiaries in the form of grants. Today, however, with the aim of maximizing social impact in mind, some foundations are also asking themselves why the endowment capital itself shouldn't also be invested with a social purpose. The social impact investing approach enshrines the use of a foundation's financial means, be it capital, endowment, dividends, etc., by investing in line with its mission. This reality encompasses a number of practices, including positive and negative screening of investments in terms of social impact, most commonly known as the socially responsible investing practice, investment of a foundation's endowment to generate both positive social impact and a financial return. This practice is called mission-related investing in the U.S. and in where this concept emerged and in the U.S. specific context, it's distinguished from program-related investments, which are a technical term of the Internal Revenue Service in the U.S and it's designed to achieve specific program ob objectives, earning most often a below-than-market return. And the final practice is the total impact approach, which is the employment of all resources, assets, and operations of a foundation to serving its mission. The terminology describing these practices remains inconsistent and often ambiguous. We have flagged some of them on this slide, however, the bottom line uniting them is the aim to maximize social impact. Well, this all sounds great, but you may find yourself wondering, how can social impact investing be integrated into a foundation's work? In what ways can it be employed, employed as a complement to grant making? The regulatory landscape varies significantly across Europe. What legislative and cultural barriers might foundations find themselves facing? We will now turn to our panelists who will share their insights and experiences on how to integrate social impact investing into foundations work and how it is a viable complement to grant making. 
So without further delay, I leave the floor to Felix Oldenburg from the Association of German Foundations. Thank you again for being here with us. So I think Felix is with us on the line, so I'm just checking. Can you hear me, Felix? Oh, I'm not sure Felix can hear us. Um, oh, so maybe by before we can hear more about Felix, we can um, immediately have a look at the um, MRI pilot fund that um, Johannes Weber no? is. Oh, sorry. No, Johannes, we'll have to wait another couple of minutes for you to have uh, your intention. Felix, I think we can hear you. That's great. Wonderful. I'm so sorry. I tried the phone, but uh, the technology okay. was perfect. It was all my fault. No, don't worry. <laughs> so we all, we're all ears. Hello to everyone and to the people I know, Laura, Jan, and the many I don't know. It's very good to be with you. Um, let me start with a very short introduction. I've spent the past 10 years uh, thinking about the practice of helping great social ideas grow. And what I'm going to tell you is a reflection from this particular set of experiences. And only the past year I have really focused on the challenge of foundations. So let me start at the beginning. Why do we think about foundations and social impact investing at all? My answer is we think about it because the world is more complicated than the foundations are set up to, um, to fund. The world does not only consist of two types of ideas. On the one end, the ideas that will only use grants to grow and to sustain themselves, and on the other end, ideas that are commercial and can return a market, um, can, can, can return a market uh, dividend. The world consists, and you can look around you, the world consists of ideas that exist between these two extremes. Um, whether you want to build a road and accept a public subsidy, or whether you want to run a hospital and have to cross-subsidize it, whether you are a, a startup that first uses money, um, eats money before it can return money, the world exists between these two extremes. The two extremes can also be described in terms of uh, the grant or a donation as a minus 100% return and the market rate return as plus X percent. The world is set up between these two poles and especially when it's uh, when you worry about social problems you typically don't have either the one end or the other end. However, foundations treat them as if they existed on two completely separate poles. I typically ask three questions to an audience, but I can't hear or see you now, uh, so you'll just have to uh, answer for yourself. Um, one is, who of you has ever made an investment? Uh, probably all hands go up at this point if I could see them. The second question is, who of you has ever made a donation? Again, talking to foundations, or a grant, again, talking to foundations, most of the hands go up at this point. Um, now, the third question is, who of you has ever given a grant or donated to the same organization they have invested in. And then what typically happens is that no hand goes up or people are not sure what I'm even talking about. To me that's very strange. Um, if we think about what's the best for a given cause, a given organization, surely the form of financing should follow the function of the impact. The world, however, today functions the other way around. We typically approach organizations with the attitude of purely a grant maker or purely an investor. And depending on whether you talk to the grant making uh, um, team in the organization, in the foundation or to the investment team. I believe the, the future will look very differently. Um, I believe in the future we will um, think about creative combinations of both or syndications if you want to use the technical term. You will have different players, whether it's foundations, banks, private investors, donors, funding in a coordinated way between themselves 
the business plan of an organization at the return that truly reflects where the organization currently stands. So let me give you an example. If you have a young organization um, uh, in job in, 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 with particular tough target group in jobs training, this organization may be at the stage where they can recover half of their money. So half of the money that the, uh, that the organization needs, it, ca it can uh, generate by earned income strategies. Now typically this organization will turn to a grant giver to, um, uh, to fund the deficit and it will do so over years and years. An alternative would be for the grant giver to team up with an investor and provide a financing that is aspirational and over the over time will increase or decrease the negative returns until the organization can fund itself and then grants can be used for the next organization. Um, it is my view that this will happen inevitably but it will only happen if we create a marketplace because it replaces this type of relationship replaces the traditional one-to-one -one relationship between a grant giver and a grantee and it requires a far more sophisticated conversation about the real needs and the development perspectives of an organization and it requires a conversation between uh, the funders at different fund at different with different return expectations on the other end that means that foundations will need not only to talk to other foundations for collaboration but also to private investors donors banks uh, in order to create what I would call syndicated or hybrid deals that combine repayable and non-repayable um, uh, funding. This does not happen currently um, because we're a very young industry, we're a very young market and this approach requires the silos to completely come down. It also doesn't happen typically because foundations haven't felt the need to think in these terms. I think that is changing. It is not only changing because of an impact orientation, it's also changing because of the uh, low return environment that foundation investors find themselves in, in generating returns that can then be uh, given as grants. Foundations are across Europe in a deep crisis when it comes to dealing with the low or zero interest environment. I think this will trigger a renewed interest in social impact investing as an alternative to market-based returns that are no longer available the way they were a couple of years ago. Today the market is tiny. In Germany the market of impact investments, although of course there's confusing terminology here, is probably only a couple of million per year, if that. Um, this is a grain of sand in the bigger scheme of things. And I think we, that we have to watch one thing in the conversation and I'm going to end with that. We've got to watch out in the market creation that we don't understate the importance of what we're trying to do and the relevance it has to foundations, but we don't overstate the immediate market potential. Because what investors over the past, social impact investors have felt in the past few years sometimes is they're standing at the end of an oil pipeline and there is no oil coming out. So there's all this capital and it's not very hard to collect capital if you're an impact investing fund today, but it's very hard to allocate it to social enterprises that, are actually, that, that actually have an impact promise. In order to overcome this dilemma, we really need hybrid or syndicated finance that doesn't begin uh, a conversation with uh, an investee only when they have a big ticket they want invested and only if they can return above five, six or even 10%. That will not work and that's where we are today. Um, so that's why I think we're, we have an incredibly important topic uh, here but it will require the breaking down of barriers between foundations with each other and between foundations and other funders and it will require the emergence of the landscape that can actively um, match the different players involved. I have started such an organization four years ago, the Financing Agency for Social Entrepreneurship um, and I'm hoping that we will in five or ten years see a practice of social impact investing 
that truly generates its own pipeline rather than to wait for investment ready organizations whatever that means to come out at the end of the pipeline and with that i'll give it over to johannes who will describe one specific instrument with which we've tried to bring in a couple of foundations into this very new practice well thank you very much um hello everybody thanks for the invitation thanks for this great overview felix um Complementary to what Felix uh, did, I'm going to kind of zoom in and uh, want to talk about some very concrete first measures, particularly the MRI pilot fund, uh, we took in order to foster this um, the, the idea of impact and mission investing in the German foundation sector. Um, why did we do that? Um, we believe that uh, mission investing and impact investing is a very important and useful tool in order to increase the overall impact of the foundation, particularly in a low interest environment we're in at the moment. When I, when I say we, I mean the two BMW foundations, the BMW Foundation Herbert Quandt and the Ebert von Kuhnheim Foundation, who consolidated into one in, in 2016 and we are at the end of a kind of strategic process now. Um, we are in the field of impact investing, mission investing, social impact investing, there are a lot of terms for quite some time. I mean the BMW Foundation is a supporter of, of the EVPA for, for quite some time. Uh, in a German context, um, we started with mission investing and impact investing about uh, four or five years ago, both in terms of doing impact investing and in terms of, of promoting the idea and strengthening, strengthening the, the ecosystem for impact investing uh, in Germany. Um, this is quite a challenging task. Um, Felix already mentioned that we are kind of thinking in silos, still thinking in silos, that the market is very small and um, that Maybe it's not a German particularity, but um, foundations do not want to talk about how they invest their, their endowments in general. Um, what did we do? Um, I think we took an approach which would maybe we would maybe call today systemic, and here's the next slide. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of series of, of, of measures. Um, and I only want to, want to mention the first three. Together with the Association of German Foundations, we founded um, a working group. This was the first step. Um, the so-called experts group uh, impact investing, a group of, um, of 25 foundations with the aim of, of uh, exchanging their experiences, improving um, the conditions for impact investing in Germany for foundation, and to with the aim of developing and implementing new projects in the context of um, impact investing and mission investing. Uh, one of these projects was a, a handbook on impact investing for German foundations, that's the third line, um, with, uh, about, with contributions from, from 40 experts um, on the basics of impact investing, concrete support for all steps of the investment process, and with national and international examples, which we published also together with the Association of German Foundations in May last year. Another measure was, the, um, was a very small first pilot fund, a mission-related investment pilot fund, because there was and there is still a lack of adequate impact products for foundations in Germany. Um, as we are not a foundation and not a fund manager, we partnered with Bond Venture, a very professional um, and experienced German impact fund manager, with, which set up this um, very small first fund. On the next slide, you can see the basic facts of this project. Um, the investors are the Association of German Foundations and uh, six other foundations who invested um, 100,000 euro each. This was the minimum tax, uh, minimum ticket size um, under the use of uh, regulation. So the total volume of the, of the fund is 700,000 euros. 
Um, the fund dur duration is four to six years. Um, our, uh, the fund manager is Bonventure, and we will have uh, Jochen Herdrich, an investment manager from Bonventure, in the Q&A session. And if you have more specific technical questions um, on this fund, you maybe ask him. We expect a target return of uh, 2%. It's a very classical GPLP structure, and it was the first um, UCIF regulated fund, respectively. Bond Venture was the first UC, uh, fund manager under the, the UCIF uh, regulation. What's the mission of the fund? Um, the mission is fostering education in the um, so-called DACH region, so the German-speaking countries, um, Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. So this was the geographic focus. And, um, why education? Education is a very important uh, topic, but education is also um, one of the smallest common denominators of um, all foundations in Germany, I would say, or many foundations in Germany. Uh, what are the target enterprises? Um, they should have a proof of concept. They should be in the, in the field of, of education, uh, of course a stable business model, and so it's, it's not uh, venture capital, but it's uh, more gro a growth financing. Um, since spring 2016, um, the whole capital is allocated uh, towards three companies now. Um, there is uh, Mobilis Lern, and it's um, a provider of um, kind of IT, IT education, how you call it. It's a, it's a leasing model for tablets and uh, laptops and schools. Uh, it's Kiko Amzi, a daycare center with a very specific um, pedagogic, pedagogical um, program. They want to implement and, and roll out on all their, their uh, centers. And there is Donature, a provider of kind of ecological education with workshops for pupils, with books, with apps, and, and so on. Um, we're totally aware that um, to put it in a picture of, of Felix, it's a kind of, it's not a, a grain of sand, it's a grain of a grain of sand, this, this very small fund. But the, the aim was not um, size on the first hand, but it was to, it was a kind of proof of concept. And we wanted to show that German foundations can align uh, their mission with their asset allocation and to create a kind of uh, blueprint. Um, as already mentioned, there uh, will be Jochen Herdrich, um, investment manager from Baum Venture in the Q&A session, and um, we're happy to, to answer all your questions um, afterwards. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Johannes. Um, yes, indeed, and, and, and I see that Johan Herdes from Bonventure is online, so he will be available, as you said, for, um, for the Q&A at the end. So I invite all participants again to, um, to ask questions because uh, it's really a good opportunity for, for them to be in touch with our panelists. Uh, just to let you know, our panelists, that we already have a question that is connected to impact measurement and the difference between impact measurement in a grant-making approach and then in investing approach. So we'll come back to that later in, in the Q&A. But um, for the time being, I think it's, it's the right moment to, um, to leave the floor to Caroline Mason uh, from the Esme Furban Foundation. Um, and she will give us a little bit, uh, a little, like some information about how they did uh, impact investing uh, in, the last, in the last years. Caroline, the floor, the floor is yours. I hope you can hear as well. Hi, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Great. Yeah, great. Great. Um, so, um, I just quick, quick question. I don't have um, control over the um, presentation, yeah. do I? Yeah, just let me know when you want us to. Um, okay, to move great. It. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. So, um, what I'm just going to quickly do um, is just to give a bit of background of who we are, how long we've been doing it, and our approach. Run through our current portfolio. Um, give some examples um, of of some successful. Um, but also where it's, what some examples where actually we've it's gone very wrong. Well, a, an example um, where actually it hasn't been a success and we've lost our money. Um, and also some some of the lessons that we've learned, and then just where, where we see things going forward in 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 the UK generally. So um, could I have the next slide? So just a bit of background. Um, 
so we're one of uh, the um, largest um, grant making foundations in the UK, independent grant making foundations in the UK. Our endowment was about a billion uh, sterling in December. We give out about between 35 and 37 million pounds a year in grants and we have an allocation of a 45 million pound allocation to social investment um, which we and we commit about five to six million pounds a year out of that. It's a revolving fund um, and it actually sits on our endowment. It sits on our balance sheet so we haven't separated it out um, so it actually sits um, on our balance sheet. Um, I was really interesting to hear about how uh, this idea of having a single um, a single approach um, and we do so at the beginning of last year we merged our social investment and grant making uh, teams and the way we look at it is um, we look at uh, the organization and then we look at the tools that we have at our disposal to help that organization um, and then we put the right combination together so most of what we do is multi-year funding and most and about 70 percent of our funding is core funding often unrestricted so we are looking at organizations over the longer term anyway so the extension into um, from grant making to repayable grants to loans and equity is not a huge step for us um, we see ourselves as facilitators and assessors of risk and impact so um, that that's how we look at it when we're judging an organization we're helping them do things better um, and what we're very good at is assessing a great organization and whether they're going to deliver the risk and uh, sorry the impact and what the risks of that are um, we're very it helps hugely that we believe in contribution or attribution so we don't feel the need to attribute impact to us um, because often we know that a lot of organizations have multiple multiple funders so um, we have a concept of attribution of sort of contribution um, and our basic model is is that really is that we're, we're often looking at new models um, and tackling systemic injustice and so that that lends itself well to the sort of combination of grants and social investment at different times and at different stages across the theory of change in that in 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 that organization or that or that in or that area or that sector um, we um, have about a thousand organizations in our portfolio at any one time the majority of which are grants um, would you mind going to the next slide thanks these are just the areas uh, across both our grants and social investment we look at the arts children young people environment food and social change and we do social investment across all of those different areas in the in the UK. Could you go to the next slide? Um, just to say that we are targets for our social investment is that they because you know it's just a, a an impact tool. So um, we just our our presumption is that. Um, the, the impact return or the social return will be equivalent to our grant making it's just a different way of doing it um, we recognize that um, there is um, a need for organizations to start to start coping with this type of um, so with, with, with this type of fi financing so we want to provide the right support for those organizations to be able to transition to more sustainable models we're also really interested in increasing the flow of funds into the social investment market but only from the impact perspective we're just not interested in um, structures for their own sake it's only if they absolutely help the organizations um, thrive um, we aim to recover at, at a portfolio level our money um, back um, net of costs and I will if you could go to the next slide um, this is at December 2016 this was our portfolio to date um, so we've committed about 44 and a half million um, of which 32.2 million has been drawn down and about 14 million has been repaid um, we um, go from 60,000 to a million so um, and on av our average term is about six years we've been doing this for about well since 2005 so for 12 years and in that time we've had seven defaults only actually our returns are looking 
are getting better every year. And at the moment, our gross IRR across the portfolio is 2.8% and our net is 2%. Um, and on the right, these are, we have 100, we've, we've, we've made 116 investments um, into debt, equity, into funds. We do land purchase, which is sort of a conservation purchase of lands. Other are things like guarantees um, and underwriting facilities, um, then quasi-equity, and we've also invested in six social impact bonds. Um, could you go to the next slide? Thanks. So just very, very quickly, um, so uh, um, I'll just touch on a couple of these. Um, so resonance real lettings is a really interesting um, example of where um, we have, um, it's been an incredibly successful uh, social investment here in the UK. Um, it's about now, I think, 60 million. It's a fund of about 60, 50, 60 million. It now has institutional investors, such as pension funds and local authorities, invested in it. Um, it invests in, in move-on accommodation for ex-homeless people. Um, and um, so it, it, it buys properties and then leases them to charities that are helping homeless people to, to transition. Um, we, the way it started actually is we have a very long-term relationship with resonance over many years. Um, and we, they, we have a, a grant relationship with them to start off with where they have a, um, an R&D fund um, where they can take up to £50,000 in grant money uh, to uh, develop new products, new, new financial impact products. Um, if the products are successful, um, then, we, then, the, then the, uh, the grant money gets repaid back into the pot and can be reused again, and they can use it again. Um, if, it, um, um, if it's not successful, then it's just a grant. Um, to date, we've, um, we've done this with them four times, and um, the first one was a great community land trust uh, fund that was set up. The second one was Real Lettings um, property. The third was the first SITR fund, and the fourth um, actually never happened, so that just turned into a grant. Um, we also then invest as a social investor. We, we become the cornerstone social investor into the into the product that's been created. So in terms of the Real Lettings Fund, we have a half a million investment into the Real Lettings Property Fund. Um, and um, so that, for us, is a really interesting way in which we've used grant money and social investment to effectively um, uh, not only build the market, um, but um, create a really, really good impact social investment and then invest in it. Um, in terms of community renewables, um, we have invested in about in 18 actual community renewable schemes. But what we've also done is funded the platform, the FX platform, um, where these are bought and sold. Um, so ordinary people can buy and sell shares and community shares and community bonds on the platform. Um, and what we've also done is grant funded a um, um, a hub where um, all the learning goes into the hub, and so new um, new communities wanting to set up their own community renewable schemes can come to the hub and get advice um, and um, support and learning so that they don't make the same mistakes over and over again. Um, the arts transfer facility is, again, where we um, look at um, future performances for subsidized production companies when they have the opportunity to transfer to the West End. So as you can see, we, 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 we really um, use social investment in, in a variety of things. Broadband for the rural north, north is a community and broadband service in very isolated areas. It's a co-op. Um, and we gave them a, a £300,000 to transition from a, um, vo a volunteering scheme into a proper co-op structure. Um, for that, we're earning 6%. Um, so we have a very varied and we very varied portfolio. Um, would you mind going to the next slide? 
So what have we learned over the last 10 to 12 years? Uh, I would say there's four key things. One is, is that impact is totally, totally key and actually that's what the whole, uh, the whole conversation needs to start with. So we always lead with an impact theory um, because, and, and then we work backwards around what are the right tools to use to deliver that impact theory and sometimes it's sometimes it's grants, sometimes it's an investment, sometimes it's a grant that turns into an, inv an investment, um, but actually where, when we're driven by the impact theory, um, then that works really well. Where it doesn't work well, and we've had an example where um, um, an organization created a social enterprise model on the side which actually they had which was completely unlinked with their impact so it was just a, a way of earning money which would feed their charity but because there was no impact link that because there was no mission link um, actually they didn't have the expertise with which to um, to run the social enterprise and um, the social enterprise failed and we lost our money um, the second thing that we've learned is um, this idea of risk. Um, so, and knowing your, and which is linked to the, to the right expertise. Um, another one that's gone very wrong is um, where we um, invested in a challenger to the rent to own, which is a bit like Wonga here in the UK, a sort of payday lending, but instead of money, um, it's used in terms of buying white goods like a washing machine or a fridge. Um, and instead of paying £300 for a fridge, you pay £2,000 for a fridge because the interest rate is so high and the practices are really terrible. Um, and what we, what we didn't have, what, what we didn't appreciate was the risk associated with, um, exactly, with the actual underlying and the knowledge of the underlying business model of um, the the um, providers that we were challenging through this model um, and again we lost we lost all of our money within um, within six months but the learning from that has meant that we have now invested in an online challenger so rather than actually having um, uh, businesses on the high street trying to compete we've invested in a model which is challenging it challenging payday lending with an online version and that's going much better. Um, and then finally what we've learned is that, you know, the, to, the, the, you know, we firmly believe that the market is not social investment. Social investment isn't a market, it's a facility. Just like grant making isn't a market, not really, it's just a tool or, or, or a facility. And what, what, what's really important is having the understanding of the underlying issues. So, um, and I think that's where a lot of social investments go wrong, where there isn't the underlying knowledge of what makes homelessness, you know, what are the risks and opportunities around homelessness, what are the risks and opportunities about payday lending or financial inclusion, um, what are the regulatory issues, or what are the chances of it going wrong. Um, so I, uh, I think sometimes we forget that and we get very, very fixated on the financial structures. Actually, what we're finding is that those, that, that isn't where the expertise lies and that will make this successful. Um, and then finally, um, just going forward in the UK, I think there are three key areas that we see growing. Actually, one of them, oddly enough, <laughs> which I'm embarrassed to say, is Brexit um, because uh, what we see is um, the opportunity to create, um, to kind of go back to government with ideas and solutions of new models of doing things, so cooperative models, um, inclusive models, um, social enterprise models, um, and because we've got quite a long history and because the UK is so becoming so unequal, um, there's an opportunity for us to to start a different conversation with government around that. Um, the second, which is sort of linked to that, is um, not so much about public service de de delivery, but around trading models. So we see a lot of opportunities in things like um, food, community transport, um, 
uh, arts um, a lot in the environment we're looking at how um, how for example insurance companies can pay for uh, can pay for good outcomes around the restoration of wetlands and peatlands and uh, be, so because that actually will reduce flooding for example so looking at really interesting models around that um, and then finally the retail sector basically getting ordinary people to invest in um, in this and there are some very interesting models around saving products um, and um, uh, yeah uh, savings products and potentially pension products where um, or, or bond products where actually ordinary people can invest so we see um, a really exciting time ahead actually and we're seeing the blurring of these sort of boundaries, which say, which say, this is philanthropy, this is social investment, this is this is mainstream investment, um, and leading, underpinning it all of it is is the realization that what has to drive this is outcomes, change, and impact, rather than um, structures. And that's I'll finish there. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Caroline. This is all very interesting, and I see also on our on our screen, a couple of questions that we will ask you in a minute. Uh, but learning from from SF11 and, and the UK market, I think, can give a lot of very interesting insight for, for our attendees. Uh, before we have this, this Q and A um, and the interaction with the panelists, um, I'm very happy now to introduce you to our last panelist, our last speaker. Um, Rafaela is um, part of the Fondazione Cariplo. And um, this Fondazione is, is a banking foundation in, in, in Italy, which is also a specific type of organization. And they're engaged now into something called mission-connected investments. So I'll leave you the floor now, Rafaela, and then and we can all uh, meet again for the, for the Q&A. Thank you. OK. Thank you, AVPA, and thank you all for the attention. I, I, I prepare a, a very um, short slide, uh, and you can find my email to, um, if you have some question again, um, before the webinar. Uh, first of all, I want to analyze the Italian ecosystem. Uh, next slide. Uh, Italian ecosystem is uh, quite complex, so I want to give to you some indication without deeper more, much more. Italy has been uh, one of the first countries in, in Europe to, uh, to draw the attention on um, uh, social enterprises enterprise phenomenon. Uh, today in Italy uh, we have uh, many actors uh, who operate in diff different sectors, so culture, uh, care service, healthcare and so on. And the, th the third sector uh, find paid employment uh, many workers. Um, during the last year Parliament has approved the, the um, law regarding regards the, th the third sector and um, they have one here to formulate the crates to um, carry out the, the law. Um, uh, I want to analyze two um, of uh, um, the most important uh, um, uh, subject that operates in the third sector. The first of all is uh, the social driver, driven innovative startups. Next slide. That, um, that were established, established by law. And um, um, those entities are um, in, innovative, so the, um, the core of activities uh, um, uh, is the production and the marketing of social service and or goods. Uh, with the high technology uh, value the most uh, the most of those uh, entities are uh, located in uh, Lombardy Emilia Romagna Lazio and so on so uh, in the north north of uh, the Italy <clears throat> um, as you know uh, Italy um, participates participated to the G8 meeting in the last uh, next slide 
and um, during this uh, during this period, uh, the social impact task force has um, identified. Um, five key areas with the high potential for impact investments. Uh, you can see the graph, uh, the graphic in, um, in the slide. Um, before this study, uh, Fondazione Cariplo uh, has identified a great opportunity for the development of the social entrepreneurship and has decided to play a key role in the um, develop of um, impact investing market market um, but um, who uh, banking foundation are as you mentioned uh, mentioned before we are a, we are a typical entities in Italy we are no profit private entities created by law uh, the Amato law in the 99th 19, um, which lead the, uh, to the privatization of saving banks and the banks of month. Uh, in specific, the Amato law separates traditional banking activities from philanthropic ones. And um, today um, there are 18 uh, banking foundations. And you can see the uh, social project and uh, the total asset in uh, at uh, the end of 2040. Five, five, ten, sorry. Uh, what uh, does uh, um, what uh, Fondazione Caripolo does today? Uh, first of all, we have a part of our uh, um, investing portfolio, more or less 7%, investing in so-called mission-connected investments uh, that, take, um, that um, combine the um, uh, return uh, and the um, social aspect um, um, and the social aspect. We are working of, on six areas. The next slide. Social finance, social housing, venture capital, private equity, agro-food and green energy. We invest directly or uh, in fund. Uh, in the second uh, pillar of um, our uh, mission connecting investment or social impact approach is um, the capacity building. Next slide. Um, to give uh, the opportunity to social entrepreneurs to um, uh, develop their project. We create uh, an accelerator um, and, and, and entities, Cariplow Factory, who, um, uh, um, who, um, that, uh, who um, helps the, um, the young social entrepreneurs. Uh, but uh, what, um, what are the projects the project for the future. Um, next slide. Uh, we are working uh, to create a new entity who can invest directly or, in, or um, uh, through fund in entities uh, whose business is strongly social. Uh, we are working on, so I cannot give you more details, and uh, I hope to um, uh, analyze my, much more this uh, aspect in uh, the um, uh, next month. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Rafaela. I think this slide is actually very important also to understand uh, this, this approach of patient capital that um, Caripro is, is, is looking at. Um, so we will, we will probably have a few questions for you um, in, in the Q&A that we can start now. Uh, I'm looking at my screen where I see quite a number of questions popping up. Um, maybe I can start with um, getting back in touch with Caroline Mason um, from Esme Furban. I think there was one question about you know, the, the rationale behind having a single team um, mm -hmm. for grant making and, and investment. I think the question was, uh, yeah, what were your main considerations for integrating the social investment and grants team? Uh, that's the first question. And then there was another question 
Uh, actually, a little bit about, you mentioned that the endowment of Esme Fabian is, is about a billion pounds, uh, mm -hmm. and, and that the investment part is, is amounting to about 45 to 50 million. And there, there are a couple of questions about how you basically you know, combine the management of these 50 million uh, and the, the, the 950 million, the, the other 950 million. Um, I think a more specific question from Wolfgang, who we know already quite well, is, mm -hmm. um, mm -mm, yeah, go ahead, because uh, Susanna is looking with me at these questions. And yes, can... maybe you could tell us how, how the rest of your endowment is, is invested. Is, yeah. it, is it also in, in impact or, or, or according to um, social responsible investments or environmental Why? considerations yeah that's that these are like a series of two questions for you Caroline okay um, so in terms of the first one um, increasingly everything that we do as a grant maker or as a funder actually we, we now call ourselves a funder rather than a grant maker is what is in the best interest of the organizations on the ground so um, you know that's what we do so we um, survey our grantees or, or, or those we fund, we, um, we uh, provide training. Um, so we're, we're, we're trying to always listen to what, um, what, what they're telling us. And um, what they told us is that actually we're one organization. We want to have a relationship with you. It, we shouldn't have to apply two or three times over depending on where we're trying to go. We should be able to have a strategic, you know, if you're a core funder and you're a long-term strategic core funder, just can we have a long-term strategic relationship with you and not have to kind of get, let all of this, these kind of different structures get in the way. So that's the reason why we, why we put the funding team together because um, that's the reality. Most of the organizations on the ground now in the UK have a blend of um, trading revenue, um, grants, contracts with government, and social investment. That's, that is the reality for most organizations on the ground. So how do we reflect that and then respond to that it, it, and make sure that it's in the best interest? In, okay. in, in their best interest rather than ours? In terms of our endowment, we are on a journey. Um, we so uh, we do two main things in our in our in, in endowment. It's very large, obviously, so um, and we only invest in funds. So it's quite tricky to um, to have a sort of uh, a strategy. Um, there are sorry, there are three things we do. One is we fund organisations like Share Action and Carbon Disclosure Projects. Um, we also work with them and um, the Charities Responsible Investing Network. Um, and what we do is we look at, uh, we don't really think that divesting is the right thing, although we are pretty much out of, out of coal, et cetera. Um, but what we look at is activism, so engagement and activism. So we will sign um, activist letters around um, for example, uh, the re 100 or the FAIR initiative in terms of anti antibiotics in meat. Um, so where there's, where there's um, an activism role which is linked to our mission, we will do that. And the third thing that we have now started doing is looking at all of our funds to see if they, have, if they are thematically um, um, counterproductive to any of our missions, in which case we wouldn't, we wouldn't invest in them in the first place. So we're beginning to screen out investment um, that are act actively acting against our mission. And, and would you say that there's a proportion of your endowment that is really like impact? Oh, imp I've, impact no, or? very little. Yeah, no, again, we don't, I, I, I couldn't say, I mean, we're, you know, we, um, we have a really, really, really diversified portfolio. Of, I mean, 20, as a 25% of our of our endowment is in VC funds, growth VC funds, and a lot of those tend to be technology funds, and most a, a lot of those tend to be in the area of green tech, um, uh, fitness, health, because that tends to be the. So again, they're not necessarily aligned with our mission, but they're very mm -hmm. positively invested. If you see what I mean. Okay, that's very interesting. Does that make sense? Thanks a lot. Yeah.
Yeah, I think so. Um, if, if our participants have further questions for you, I'll, I'll invite, you, invite them to, um, to, to, to write them down as we still have about 20, 25 minutes, so it's good. Um, maybe we can turn now to, um, to uh, Johannes from BMW Foundation and um, Johan Erdrich from Bonventure uh, because we have received a couple of questions about the MRI pilot fund. Um, one is about how, how, how within the fund the impact is being measured. So I think that's a very general question. And I think one, one question is uh, that the webinar is not very much about impact measurement or management, but um, in, in this case I think we have the question about the impact measurement. And then which are the different tools? I think, Johannes, you highlighted three investment in education in the um, German-speaking countries. Um, what are the tools that are being uh, used for these investments? Uh, so I'll, le I'll let I either Johannes or Johan, uh, um, who feels more comfortable, uh, maybe reply to these questions. Hello, this is Johan from Bonventure. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, Hi, to, for the impact measurement, uh, first of all, there is an impact analysis done uh, according to this uh, input output outcome impact model. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah depends on the area if you really can measure impact or yeah out, output outcome that depends uh, from the, the, the industry of the, of the company and the branch but uh, we do an, 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 an impact analysis for for uh, each investment uh, Johannes Weber is also um, yeah, involved in this and uh, the analysis, the analysis is done together with the with the companies because we do not want to to, to implement it uh, against these companies. So we 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 do this analysis jointly, and then at least it's reviewed by a university lecturer. Thank you, Johannes. Do you want to um to add anything? Um, no, it's perfectly. Um, I totally agree. I think it's a it's it's a longer process of of impact measurement. I mean, we're creating a theory of change for every every investment, and we're doing it in in, in a very iterative process with the, together with the investee. So um, we create this theory of change together with the investee, and then we we define certain uh, KPIs, and um, we've kind of developed within our foundation um, a sort of model of monitoring these uh, these numbers um, which we, we are at the beginning of implementing now um, but this is um, for sure a longer process uh, in impact measurement. Mm -hmm. um, maybe actually Caroline because one of the questions is very general and then I'll have a question for you Rafaela but about the impact measurement um, do you see a different kind of approach to impact measurement, whether it's you know the investment part of your activities or the or the grant making, because I think there's a question about that. A couple of questions actually about um, that. So uh, we have a sort of slightly different approach to. Uh, so uh, we don't impact measurement is a bit of a. a implies a benchmark and in, and often applies attribution and which again we don't really think about so what and because we're so diverse um, and we do so many different things um, what we've created is a rating system as a proxy for performance so for every single one of our uh, investments or our grants we ask we uh, agree three outcomes and three indicators and that's it um, and they are from the organization rather than from us so they tell us what they're trying to achieve with the money um, sometimes we help them refine it or we work together but basically it's three outcomes and three indicators um, and at the end of the grant or the investment we rate the performance um, we also rate our performance um, so we can um, so that so and because we have a thousand organizations at any one time we can we use ratings as a way of then identifying trends um, in certain so are there certain certain organized types of organizations or certain sectors where the outcomes where the performance isn't great which then lends us to asking why um, and um, so we really use it as we we don't use uh, impact as a compliance tool. We use it as a strategy tool, as a performance learning and strategy tool. Um, okay. Um, maybe 
So then I can let you ask a question also for um, Cariplo. Yes, Rafaela, we have a, a question for you. You mentioned that uh, Cariplo is planning to use its endowment um, to provide patient capital um, yes. to socially driven organizations. Could you maybe uh, tell us a little bit more or explain um, in, in, in a bit more detail how, how this use of patient capital will, is, is going to look like? Yes, hi. As I mentioned before, um, we are working on this project, so I cannot give more, more details. Um, so uh, can you repeat? Yes. No, you, um, I think the question was very general. I think this notion of patient capital, which is very much you know, in, in, in the nature of impact investing, um, you just mentioned that during your presentation, and I understand that at Cariplo, this, this whole approach is, is forthcoming, so it's not yet very much implemented. But for example, yes. do you have an idea of what kind of tools would you um, pr privilege and, you know, the, the approach you will be um, following? Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> we, are, we are working. And do you have a timing for, um, you know, when Cariplo okay, will be implementing I this project? I think in the next two or three months we can have a more specific um, um, details. Okay, okay, but uh, keep us informed then. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Um, now we have a, a more, more general question to, to our panel, so whoever would, would like to contribute, um, please please do so. If you could maybe consider and, and tell us about the role of the government in advancing your social impact investment work. Have there been any concrete examples of, of partnerships that you've engaged in? And, and, and maybe you could tell us a little bit more about any, any such ventures if, if they've happened. Or more generally, the, the role of, of government either in hindering or in, or in promoting your, your activities in, in this field. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I think we have two candidates, which is great, yeah. Caroline and uh, Jochen. So, um, maybe Ladies Caroline, yeah. Them. Caroline and then Jochen, thank you. Okay. Uh, so I would say, in general, the policy environment is, is very, has been very, very favorable. Uh, you've got the setting up of big society capital. Uh, the tax regime, which is the, the, the tax incentive, which is called the Social, Social Investment Tax Release, uh, SITR. Um, what the government has not done very well is had a sort of blind focus on um, the uh, basically public, the delivery of public services and offloading them off their balance sheet, basically. Um, and sort of forgotten about the sort of trading models, the co-op models, the, the sort of the real economy models um, that exist and the link between retail investors and that very, um, very, very real type of um, investment. Um, but that's changing now because basically I think there are fewer and fewer SIBs um, and here in the UK because, um, or there's less less excitement about them and also much more greater focus on retail and on, for example, on the environment and actually just being a bit more creative and a bit more clever about it. There's a whole inclusive economy unit that's been set up, which is what do the new economy yeah, new what what are new economic models um, and that's really welcome so it gets it away from the sort of public service provision mm -hmm. okay yeah thank you Caroline uh, yeah Johan maybe if you want to say something yeah uh, long story short in Germany I do not see any role of uh, the German state in, uh, in, in kind of uh, social venture capital at least I would say the uh, the tax regulation uh, is quite prohibitive Mm -hmm. especially, especially for non-profit uh, companies, it's it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. And for example, in 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 Germany, is it easy for a foundation, as a foundation, to to make investments uh, in the form of equity or loan, or is it may, may, mainly possible through the investment in a fund, such as the MRI Pilot Fund shows? Because this is, I understand, uh, a group of six foundations who have um, well allocating part of their uh, financial means to a to a fund technically. So is there is there something um, hindering you know that kind of direct investing from from a foundation in in, in the German? 
Johannes? Um, I don't know. Um, you know. Oh, yeah. Johannes, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, I would say in general, it's, um, German foundations are very risk averse, so they 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 are in favor of, of fund solutions, and there are certain limits to to direct investments. So you cannot give, uh, you cannot invest your whole endowment in um, via loans in direct investments. So there is is a regulation that that that, that prohibits um, a, a bigger amount of of direct loans. So I think. Um, Fund solutions are very attractive uh, to to foundations on the one hand because it's not it's not a direct investment on the other hand it's a certain diversification diversification within a fund. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm keep looking. Some new questions are keep coming in, which is good. Um, I think there are yeah for those participants who have questions for Felix. Uh, Felix unfortunately couldn't stay with us for the entire session, so. But I think some of the questions that were directed to him could be actually um, also tackled by our other panelists. So we we remember that um, Felix mentioned that you know it was key for for the sector that it compared with a, a, a grain of sand <laughs> in the bigger scheme um, to have syndicated deals like hybrid um, deals in in order to um, to maximize the impact. So. Uh, having you know investors collaborating with with foundations uh, who do you know stick to grant making as their main activity, so I don't know if you see su if you see such um, you know like uh, syndicated deals happening easily or not, or whether you have uh, any views on 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 that aspect um, for anyone actually. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, we, I mean, I mean, we co-invest a great deal. I mean, there's a lot of co-investment mm -hmm. here in the UK. I would say it's not syndication, <laughs> and I accept okay. that syndication would actually syndication and grant making would be great as well. Actually, never mind social investment. I mean, the fact is is that foundations don't really work very well together. Um, uh, they kind of do on a transactional level, but not on not very well on a strategic level. I think that's changing. Um, and if you look at the Arts Impact Fund, um, that was. Um, uh, a statutory body, which was the Arts Council, two foundations, and Bank of America. Um, mm -hmm. So that was a really interesting syndication to try something in the arts, uh, to get social investment into the art, into arts organizations, which was definitely a sort of a collaboration, um, but not syndicate, you know, and most of the funds that we're in are, are you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's 10 co-investors. Um, mm -hmm. But that's, I think, a bit different from syndication. I don't think we're at syndication yet, but it would be great if we could. Mm -hmm. uh, Caroline, maybe another couple of questions um, for for you, because I see that there's a question about, you know, you mentioned that so part of, of, I mean, some concrete examples of investment that you were doing were in equity. Um, yes. So the question is, are you using other tools? And I think you went through the different types of tools that you're using, including mm -hmm. uh, project real estate, loan, equity, SIBs, mm -hmm. and so on. But I think maybe just giving maybe highlighting an, an example of the equity part. Um, yeah. And then another question is um, about, you know, it, are there sometimes uh, investments that are converted to grants retro retrospectively? Uh, and, and when does it happen and, and why? I, I also remember that you mentioned there were some, some defaults in the impact investing approach. Uh, so I guess this is becoming technically a, a grant. Yeah. Um, no, well, so yeah, no, well, uh, well, well. I mean, it's a loss, um, be, and we don't. So because our endowment sits on our balance sheet, it has a different. Oh, okay. Which comes back to we. It actually we lose the money. It doesn't turn into a grant. It, it, we lose the money. So, um, yeah. It, well, it's a no. It's a. It's a. It's a. Um, you know, it's the same would be if we lost money on any of our other investments on our endowment. So mm -hmm. it actually sits with our endowment. So we, um, yeah, so we lose the money in terms of actually okay. the investment. It's a, it's um, so we don't turn it. We don't then say that was a grant. We just say okay. we lost the money, um, and we run it as a proper port portfolio. And we have to just and we run it as a as a port portfolio. So we can't say oh, that was fine and we'll just turn that into a grant. So we're quite strict about that, which I think is right. Um, I would say in terms of the equity bit, um, so here in the UK, I think the regulatory environment is probably slightly more flexible where um, a foundation can fund anything that's charitable um, 
and that isn't constrained by legal form. So, um, in fact, one of the in fact one of the uh, investments that we've done was done alongside um, um, the um, uh, one of the funds, which was into Auticon, which is a company li limited by by shares. Um, uh, but the work they do is charitable; is deemed to be charitable. So, we we fund equity into a normal company limited by shares. So. Um, yeah, so I think there's more flexibility here about about that, and there are also mm -hmm. things like the community community interest companies, which can be uh, which can be um, share based companies with an asset lock, for example. So you can invest equity into those. Now we have a, a couple of questions um, related to whether I, I guess this would be either for for Rafaela or, or or Caroline whether you engage in, in investments that are outside of of, the, of your country or, or of the EU even. Yes, from the Senegal, we invest in Italy, not outside Italy. Okay. Yeah. We're and we're UK only. UK only. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and there was the same question for um, for the German uh, story, but I think because of the MRI fund, technically a pilot fund is technically covering Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. I guess this is also bringing some element of answer. Uh, maybe Johannes or Johan, you want to add something? Yes, uh, Bonventure, with all the funds and also with the MRI pilot fund, uh, we are doing German-speaking countries, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And not considering other countries, right? The, the German language yeah. is the key. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think, so to, to slowly wrap, wrap up and, and maybe ask a final final question to, to our panelists. So we, we've mentioned a lot of a lot of interesting points and, and social impact investing is, 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 is really a promising uh, idea. Now, we, we've had a question from the audience. How do you go about um, changing the, the mindsets of foundations to go beyond grant making? Um, are there, is it, do you think it, it requires a specific opportunity, a deal, or a change of beliefs? Um, could you maybe share your thoughts with us um, as, as on, on this closing note? Um, uh, okay, well, um, so I think there's a, there's a phrase um, in the UK that says culture eats process for breakfast. Um, <laughs> and um, I think culture is hugely important and I would say are listening to the organizations on the ground and um, responding being responding to what they're what they're saying and what they need is probably a really good way of doing it. it's it's you know it's how Esme started somebody came to us and said instead of a grant can you give us a loan and we went oh well, that's interesting all right um, and then we realized that there actually there was an opportunity to not only we started doing more lending directly but what we also then realized is that you need an infrastructure to be able to do that so then we invested in things like the funds into charity bank which is a bank which lends to the sector we invested into a uh, cash venture firm so that was how we started and i think that and i think it's it would be it's hard it, the best way to change culture i think is to listen to your customers the customers I think and then persuade your boards that actually it's in the best interest because the organizations that you care about are asking you to help them do this because it's part of their reality mm, thank you um, think, Rafael or Johan or Johannes? Johannes. Yeah. I think it's, a, it's on the one hand it's a cultural thing uh, on the other hand, I think we have to explain foundations what impact investing is. There are a lot of myths about uh, impact investing, that it's only direct investment, it, it's only venture capital and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So okay. we have to, to, to kind of turn it into a kind of normal investing. So it's not only venture capital, it's not only high risk and so on and so forth. 
And then we have to create, I think, role models like um, like Carolyn is, um, or uh, and we have to 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 develop new products for for foundations so they can see that they, their mission is aligned with the mission of this uh, this fund or this um, certain project. I think um, these are some some measures we can set in order to to foster this idea. Thank you, Raffaella. Do you see um, any, you know, uh, paradigm shift happening in Italy? And if if yes or no, how how can that happen better? Yes, um, I think that to move from concept of grants to investment is very complex in Italy, especially in Italy. I think that it must be change of mentality at all levels. Uh, in foundation, in, in uh, government, in um, other entities, and so on. Thank you. Well, that's actually what we want to. Um, what we're trying to do with these webinars is really try to uh, plant brains that can become something bigger. And um, I think we are getting to the the end of of, of this webinar. So um, I can only thank you all again, the the panelists, but also the participants who were quite number, a number online, so it, it was great uh, for your, for, so, so I'm thanking everyone for, for their time and, and, and all these, these, this expertise that was shared by the panelists, I think it was very valuable. Um, as we mentioned during the, at the beginning of the session, um, we would be very grateful if you could fill in the, the very short survey that you, that you should see pop up on your, on your screen right after you have logged out. Uh, it really takes two minutes and it gives us a lot of, of uh, imp important information about our impact and how to improve things. Um, and then before closing this, this webinar, we want to also thank our structural uh, sponsors, so BMW Foundation, uh, MUD Foundation, and also the European Commission. Uh, and I invite you all to stay tuned uh, for the recording and um, PowerPoint of this presentation that will be made available on our website as of next week. And uh, we're looking forward to welcoming you all again for our next session in June. Uh, and our intention then is to look at how venture philanthropy and social investment can contribute to, um, you know, solving the sustainable development goals of the UN. So I think that's that's basically it. Uh, thank you all again for your implication and um, time. And uh, I wish you all a very good end of afternoon, uh, evening or morning, depending on where you are. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for organizing this great session. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. bye.